and welcome to another acrylic oats tutorial on this animation. Please watch until the end for many tips and tricks you can use on your future projects. Before we move on, I'd like to thank Derivative as well as our Patreons for their support. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification to support us into making more tutorials like this. For more tutorials and downloadable files, check out our Patreon, I'll leave the link in the description. Now on to today's tutorial. Let's start by creating a torus sop. In the parameter window, set the orientation to the z-axis. Then attach an all sop at the end of the network. To create the shape we saw in the animation, we want to create three more toruses inside this one. So let's first go back to the parameter window of the torus, and we're going to decrease the size of the radius so all rings will fit inside each other. Decrease the value until around 0.50 something, but we'll probably need to come back to this later and tweak it again. Now for the rest of the rings, let's right click after the torus and we'll attach a copy sop. In the parameter window set the number of copies to 5. When we do this we will not notice the new copies right away because they are exact copies stacked in the same position of the original torus. But if we decrease the uniform scale we can shrink the copies along all three axes simultaneously. I set this value to 0.71 so that I can scale down the rings and separate them from each other. And now I want them to have this rotation movement independently from one another. Also I would like it if the movement starts and ends in the same position so that we have a perfect loop. So let's do it. First let's create a constant chop. In the parameter window we'll rename the channel to time fraction and for its value we'll type in the expression me.time dot frame and we'll divide this by me dot time dot end. What this expression will give us is a fraction of this timeline, meaning if we were to increase or decrease the length of the timeline we'll still be getting values from 0 to 1. Let's attach a node at the end of the network and we want the rotation to be between 0 and 360. So let's add a math operator after the constant chop followed by a null chop. Back to the parameter window of the math chop, go to the multi add and we'll multiply here with 360. Then let's put the null after the math view active, drag it and drop it onto the y rotation value of the copy sop. So now we have the base structure moving and what we want to do is to instance this new structure that we have. To do this let's right click after the null and we'll attach a geometry. After the geometry we'll attach a camera lights, a render, as well as an environment light. This light, unlike the light comp, has no particular position. It comes from outside all of the objects in the scene and lights them. We'll need this later because I want to use the PBR material. So let's keep this in mind for now, but we'll go into more detail later on. Now for the instancing itself, we'll use a circle sop. And I'm using the circle sop because I want to have some freedom in the arrangement of the overall shape of the instances. And the circle sop allows us this with a number of divisions. I'll attach an all after the circle and I'll rename this to pause for position and color it red. Back to the parameter window of the circle and we'll set the divisions to 3. Then we open the parameter window of the geo, go to the instance tab and turn on the instancing. We drag the position null and drop it onto the translate op and we set translate x to be 0, translate y to be 1 and translate z to be 2. To see the render I'll split the screen and attach an RGB key and an all and turn on the display flag. From here I'll fix the camera position by translating in the y direction and back to the parameter window of the render we'll set the resolution to 1280 by 1280. So now that we have this going, we can go back to the circle sop and play around with the number of divisions. Here we see that by increasing this value we can create shapes that look completely new. If you notice here your torus is being a little edgy, you can fix this by going back to the original torus and increasing the number of rows and columns all the way up to 50 and then you'll get a nice and smooth surface. Great, now from here I want to make this new shape also rotate and I want it to be synchronized as a perfect loop. Now, if you remember before, we used this uh, time null here to drive the Y rotation value of the copy sop. And now we'll reuse this to make the rotation of our new shape possible. 
So let's put the node view active, drag and drop it onto the rotate Y value of the geo and select chop reference. If the animation is going too fast, we can slow it down by decreasing the FPS value by half and this will leave us with a smooth, slow rotation. And from here you can go back anytime and change the number of divisions. Now in the next part we'll focus on the material. First let's attach a movie file in top as an environment map. What I mean by this is if we open the parameter window of the movie file in top and click on the plus sign next to the file path, by default Touch Designer has this folder with images. So I'll add this one, but you could also google any environment map and use whatever you want. Attach a null after the movie file in top, then drag the null and drop it onto the environment map of the environment light comp. Now we won't see any changes at first, and this is because Touch Designer by default assigns a font material to the geo. So let's instead create the PBR material that we want, and then we drag and drop it to the geo and select parameter material. The result will be a little underwhelming at first, but we have a lot of control by changing these effects in the parameter window. So depending on the image you choose on the movie file in top, these effects will have different results. For this animation I'm looking for a more metallic look, and these are the values that I came up with. Now from here you can tweak the light comp to get some different reflections, or you can keep changing the shape to come up with your own version. I hope you can learn something from this video, and it inspired you to try things out yourself. Thank you so much for watching until the end, if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and I'll see you very soon with another tutorial. Until then, have a great time, bye!